Well, now that the COVID pandemic emergency is officially over, what lessons have we learned from the three-year experience? On this week's episode of The Global Lane, the head of the Health Freedom Defense Fund says one big insight is how the government can quickly exceed its authority by imposing mandates on healthy Americans. There's something called the Public Health Services Act, and the Public Health Services Act grants certain authority to CDC um, in the event of an emergency. But the CDC doesn't have the power or authority to intervene in our individual lives. It's only allowed under what's called um, Section 42, Title 264. It's only allowed to investigate, inspect, in exterminate, fumigate. You know, you can see all these things pests, articles, animals that are being brought into the country or transported over state lines, which might then infect human beings. Nowhere does this authority um, allow CDC to dictate how individual Americans lead their lives, let alone to dictate that tens of millions of Americans who travel every day for work or pleasure have to wear a mask when there's zero evidence that they're sick. And so we filed this lawsuit because we felt that there was a clear overstepping of C CDC's lawful authority, and the court agreed with us. Well, a lot of Americans felt that there was a lot of government overreach in this uh, pandemic. Uh, so what have we learned about masking? What does the scientific evidence say? The, you know, what's really disgraceful is that the CDC knew in May of 2020 that masks do not stop the transmission or spread of flu, of respiratory infections like flu. It knew that. It published its own study in May of 2020 looking at 14 randomized controlled trials, which are the gold standard in scientific um, study, a study, scientific analysis, and yet it proceeded with its mandates. It's insane. And then in the most recent months and the last couple of years, there's been a mountain of evidence, most recently the Cochrane Organization's review of over 70 randomized controlled trials finding that no masks do not work. But it's worse than that. It's not only that they fail to work, they actually cause harm. This is so important. It is incumbent upon anyone seeking to control you or dictate your behavior to prove that whatever they're trying to do, one, works, but two, won't have any deleterious impact on you. And masks, masks actually very quickly show rapid increases in blood levels of CO2, which reduces your oxygenation levels, and we know how dangerous that is, and that causes a cascade of harm across the human body. Well, what have we learned about vaccine mandates and the military? I know the Pentagon's argument has always been we must protect the troops and the sailors because they're together in confined spaces. We need them ready for combat, especially our deployed Navy fleets. What about that? Well, I don't think mandating, I don't think any ethical society or free society mandates any kind of a medical intervention. They authorize products that prove to be dangerous. We know this from Vioxx. We know this from thalidomide. We know this from so many things over the decades. And we also know this from the COVID shots. The COVID shots were never studied to determine whether or not they actually stopped transmission or infection. That's been admitted at the World Health Organization and elsewhere. And we knew as early as July 27th of, of uh, 2021, the CDC admitted this, that the shots do not stop transmission or infection. Therefore, there simply is no public health um, justification for these products or for mandates. They shouted down, they smeared and decried anyone like myself who, sp who spoke out, who tried to argue that we need to, we need more time, we need to look at the science. They called us conspiracy theorists and misinformation spreaders. They were horrific. They literally did everything they could to silence those of us who were trying to um, bring a little reason to the conversation. So I don't think we can argue that this was just an oversight. It was something a little bit more nefarious in my view. Well, I mean, whatever happened to free speech? You put the information out there, let people decide, then make their own choices. Well, in the event of another virus, uh, and we pray that doesn't happen, that we don't have one as deadly as COVID, but if there is another pandemic, are you saying the government should not act to contain the virus and protect the people, or how should it act? What should be done? Well, listen, let's be very clear. COVID was no where as deadly as they originally purported. Nowhere as deadly for the vast majority of people. It was only a serious issue for the, for the very elderly or people with serious comorbidities, okay? So they exaggerated that from the very, very beginning. And we knew that from the Princess Cruise Lines where there was predominantly an elderly, elderly population and they had about a 1% fatality rate. I would say, you know, we need to look at what 
history has shown us public health issues, for the most part, are reserved or public health powers are reserved for the states. So the states can deti- determine whether or not there's something in their locality that needs to be addressed. We have to err on the side of caution, lest we have this kind of situation happen again. Okay, Leslie Manukian, president of the Health Freedom Defense Fund. Thank you, Leslie, for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.